Hey everyone, my name is Alad Mashiach, and today I'll be sharing a journal highlights video titled Long-Term Survival from Breast Cancer and Brain Metastases in the Era of Modern Systemic Therapies. Approximately 10 to 30% of patients with breast cancer will develop brain metastases, and as high as 60% of these patients will exhibit CNS progression as the contributing cause of death. And while survival for patients with breast cancer brain metastases is believed to be more favorable than other brain metastases histologies, data remains scarce on the subset of brain metastases patients from breast cancer with extended survival. In this study, performed under the guidance of Dr. Kanziolka, our goal was to explore the prevalence of extended survival in patients with breast cancer brain metastases treated with modern management approaches and to explore CNS-related mortalities. Data was collected prospectively at a point-of-care registry between 2012 and 2022. We collected demographic, molecular, treatment, imaging, as well as SRS procedures and systemic therapies. For analysis, we utilized the finding gray method for competing risk with death as a competing risk. In total, we had 190 patients in this study that comprised 931 tumors and a total of 429 SRS treatments. Our median overall survival was 25 months from initial SRS treatment and 130 months from primary breast cancer diagnosis. In total, 17% of patients were identified as long-term survivors, such as those that live more than five years, and the majority of them were hormone receptor positive and HER2 positive, while only a minority of them were triple negative. The predictors of long-term survival for more than five years was HER2 positive receptor status and treatment with targeted therapies. The cause of death was identified for those patients who were deceased at the time of analysis. Only 11% of the patients in our population died from CNS-related causes, while the overwhelming majority of them died from non-CNS-related causes, and only 10% of the patients the cause of death could not be identified. What about the cause of death in long-term survivors? Interestingly, none of the long-term survivors died from CNS-related causes, and all of them who were deceased at the time of analysis died from non-CNS-related causes. We try to identify predictors of CNS-related mortality and non-CNS-related mortality. The only predictor from CNS-related mortality was development of leptomeningeal disease, while the predictors from non for non-CNS-related mortality were a triple negative disease status, KPS less than 80, active systemic disease, and extracranial metastasis at the time of diagnosis. In summary, patients with brain cancer breast metastases can achieve longer survival than might have been previously anticipated. Importantly, most patients did not die from CNS-related disease, while none of the long-term survivors died from CNS-related disease. With better control of exocranial disease by advancements in systemic therapies, along with aggressive local therapy such as SRS, a chance for a cure might exist for a subgroup of patients with breast cancer or brain metastases. At this point, I would like to thank our entire NYU Langone Health team for help helping us with this project, and I would like to invite our viewers to read our manuscript by clicking in the hyperlink below.